Diseases are scary. They can make us sick and even kill us. Some diseases, like diabetes or cancer, don't spread to other people. Others, like malaria or influenza, are infectious. There's lots of agents that can infect someone. There's parasites that cause malaria, bacteria that may infect a cut in your skin or hide out in rotten food, and viruses like the ones that cause seasonal flu or influenza. Infectious diseases can be terrifying because of how fast they can spread. Ebola is an emerging infectious disease that everyone's been worried about. Some species of Ebola virus can kill 70% of the people they infect. It's a terrible disease. But how contagious is Ebola actually, and how scared should people be about catching the disease? To answer these questions, we need to discuss how we communicate about the spread of infectious diseases. There are so many factors that determine how much a disease spreads. Epidemiologists study how diseases spread. Here are the four main factors they think about first. How easy is it to get infected? This is also known as the transmissibility. How long is someone infectious? How often do infected people come into contact with susceptible people? This is also known as the rate of contact. And how many people in the population are susceptible to the infection? Transmissibility is determined by how the infectious agent or pathogen spreads. For example, HIV spreads through bodily fluids, such as blood, semen, or breast milk. In contrast, some diseases travel through the air, like the common cold or influenza. The virus is in a cloud of tiny invisible droplets, so if you breathe that air, you get infected. So influenza is more transmissible than HIV, which requires direct contact. Can you think of other ways diseases spread? What about malaria or E. coli? The way a disease spreads is a big part of its transmissibility. The second factor is the length of time someone is infectious. It can be days or decades, depending on the pathogen. The longer someone is infectious, the more people they could spread it to. The third factor is the rate of contact between sick and healthy people. This depends on the community. The rate of contact in a city is much higher than in rural areas. Cultural practices also influence the rate of contact. What are some ways that you decrease your risk of contacting infectious diseases in everyday life? The fourth factor is how susceptible the population is to the disease. A population that has never been exposed to a disease before will be 100% susceptible. However, if some people have had the disease and recovered, they could have immunity. In other words, their immune system remembers the infection, and if they are exposed again, they will fight it off quickly. Or they might even be completely protected. This lowers the susceptibility. Susceptibility can also be decreased by vaccination. This is because a vaccine creates immune memories by mimicking the pathogen, but not causing disease. So people are protected even before they encounter the actual pathogen for the first time. So the susceptibility of a population is the proportion of people who have never been exposed or vaccinated. Epidemiologists use their estimates of transmissibility, length of infectiousness, rate of contact, and susceptibility to estimate how much an infection spreads. These factors are then used to calculate the reproduction number, or R number. The R number is the average number of people one sick person infects. To understand how important R numbers are, let's use a simulation. The people with white heads are susceptible to the infection, people with red heads are sick and infectious, and people with blue heads are not susceptible or have died. Let's start with four sick people. Let's think about two infectious diseases that you already know, seasonal influenza and the stomach flu. Both are caused by viruses. The influenza virus can be transmitted through the air, but it doesn't survive for long outside the human body. So unless you're standing close to someone who sneezes on you, you might not get it. 
And as a result, the R number for seasonal influenza in the United States is two. This means that if we started with four infected people, they will infect eight, then they will infect 16, and in total, after two rounds of infection, only 28 people will have been infected. On the other hand, stomach flu, which is usually caused by the norovirus, can have an R value as high as 10. After two rounds of infection, 444 people will have been infected. It's so infectious that the only way to prevent it spreading is to shut the whole school down. How do you think norovirus might be different from influenza? Which of the factors that we discussed are likely to be different? Transmissibility, length of infectiousness, rate of contact? Every disease has a different R number, depending on these factors. So now that we've seen the R numbers for some diseases that we know, what do you think the R value for Ebola would be? Take a guess. In fact, the 2014 outbreak of Ebola in West Africa had an R number of two. This is partly because a person infected with Ebola is only infectious for a short period of time after they develop symptoms. The R number provides a way for different countries to communicate with each other about how a disease is spreading. Then we can work to address the most dangerous diseases, like Ebola.